again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we're glad that you're tuned in. Um, don't mind me today if I all of a sudden go like this or do this. I got a twitchy eye and allergies and sinuses, and it's causing my eye not to want to like Tammy's work. not feeling it. So yeah. our backup plan, guys, yeah. is if things start just to go horribly weird. wrong there, It'll... we're going to just zoom in on <laughs> on me, and we're just going to make up stuff, okay? It's just weird. <laughs> and I, it just comes and goes, and it is allergies. If something is weird, uh, Dan had put a, a Google Calendar alert, which is funny, <laughs> saying Dan's allergies were really bad last year at this time of the year. And his really don't seem to be bothering as much, but my eyes, it's the third time this year that sinuses have like just screwed up my eyes. Yeah, you know, it's, know. it's it's always something. And I don't you know. know what, like we should be past ragweed, which is usually really bad for me, but who knows? You know, I mean, face it. It you was know, a warm really, summer. We we have this semi symbiotic relationship yeah, with, with with the rest of the world. With the, the world around us, sometimes it's trying to kill us. Sometimes yeah. it's leaning <laughs> sometimes into. Sometimes it's just in your eye. You know, but you got to take the good with the bad. Um. So, <laughs> prep wise, I guess we'll let's start with the funny. <laughs> let's start with the funny thing, and we'll go into something else. So, in, in, in union leader today. This headline just got my attention. Manchester schools adopt math curriculum. Well done. Well, yay. Um, and I went on to read it and I thought, how much so money do they- we? I don't know. Were they not teaching math? It says um, students in six elementary schools will start the school year with something they haven't had in more than a decade. A consistent district-wide program for mathematics. I didn't uh... know math was really... To be honest, math is one of those things that I don't think is that complicated. You would think it's math. Well, you would think so, but have you ever seen these things on on Facebook the, where the, they where they do the uh, the basic algebra and it's the brackets yeah. with the you know different I don't even know what you call, call it anymore. It's but it's it's been a while, guys. But um, I used to be able to yeah. do it. And people will argue, right, about because well, some people are it? taught do the brackets. I was taught do the brackets, brackets first. Brackets first. Always do what's in the brackets first. But actually you can see and you can actually see a, uh, a, a age delineation. Huh. There's literally two groups of people who come up with a different answer, which is the part which that that's I the part find that's concerning. Because, <laughs> because I'm like, has, I feel like there should math be... Math does have a definitive answer. Different it's, ways. It's one of those science yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well. So, so yeah, I guess for the last eleven years we've had we haven't had a consistent academic program for mathematics. Um, is this a backdoor to Common it Core? It is, I think, because it does yeah. mention Common Core in here somewhere. It is, um, I don't remember what, but um, what is kind of interesting, or maybe it's not. Um, the district is spending three hundred twenty-eight thousand nine hundred fifty dollars in federal grant funds for the first two years of Ready Math. How much? <laughs> That's what I said. Three hundred and twenty-nine thousand dollars for two years. Three hundred and twenty-nine thousand so dollars for two years for the curriculum. So for the books or for well, the what? I don't know. Okay, but that's, that's a lot. That's one hundred sixty-four thousand dollars every year. That seems like. I mean, that's more than $1,000 per Well, that's child. what I was trying to figure out. Like, okay, um, well, if we said Because I think I, I, I was reading the numbers this morning. I, I found, you know, everyone's back to school. Yeah. You know, here we go. I know Governor Sununu was super excited that Manchester <laughs> schools start after Labor yes, Day. I know. guess there's, you know, across the state, different places do it different ways, which I'm actually for, right. right? Because that's decentralized. But I think for parents and for families and stuff, I could see it making sense to just kind of have one start yep. date and that it be after the last long weekend of, right. of the season. Right. I mean, I don't I, know. I don't All know. of that makes I don't know if there's, I, you know, I'm sure there's a school of thought about getting the kids back in the groove the week before, but I think just for co- the, our people in general, it's not, no. it's a pain in I the mean, butt. I mean, I, I sort of look at myself. I mean, one of the things I was working on this year is, you know, I'm trying to have a more set schedule for mm-hmm. everything, right? Because I think it'll make me more efficient yeah. and because I'm kind of left brain, right brain and very <laughs> <laughs> artsy too. You know, I'm just trying to get into a groove where I can be my optimal me. And even just taking a week off, like going to my yep. parents and coming Throws back. Throws you off. You know, your schedule's a little off. And then you're like, I don't know how, but I gained six pounds this right. weekend. Like, I was what? like, what? Yeah, it does take time to. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say it's water weight, muscle weight, uh, chocolate weight. <laughs> Snack weight. Snack um, weight. <laughs> no, I, I do agree. I also, an interesting thing, my um, 
my former sister-in-law, um, which is weird. I don't know why I just don't call her my sister-in-law or my sister or something. Anyways, she, um, she teaches school in New York and I always liked, she teaches like first or second grade or something, or at that point she did anyways. One thing that they did, which I thought was really kind of smart and I've seen it other places, is she would teach first grade. And then the next year, she would those same kids would go with her to second grade. Oh, okay. So she taught them for two years, which I guess could be bad if the teacher was awful. Right. Um, but they didn't have to start from scratch getting to know each other and everything. They kind of just came back from summer and like, boom, let's go. And I was like, at that age, I think that probably makes a lot of sense. And I mean, does anybody really have a really bad first or second grade teacher? I mean, personalities I, don't really I, play in so much then. But. I mean, I subscribe to the school of thought that kids should be playing, right? And, right. And, and it's not only me. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of science that says, yep. you know, play is really how people learn, yep. right? So we should be incorporating as much yep. play as possible, especially at that yes. age, right? Kids should have just imagination yep. corners and just like go play and you know, uh, all of that. There's all so, sorts of teaching. There's organized teaching that revolves around play. But, you know, honestly, like, I also don't really remember much about... Do you, like, remember, I remember your teachers um, from school? Oh, I do. Okay. I remember... I mean, I was in I remember all my schools. teachers. I don't... I, I remember liking them all, so... Right. But I was, like, the teacher... I was one of those teachers' pets. Teacher, kids, uh, so. I could see Tammy being um, like, I know! I know! I know! Answer, I know. <laughs> I wasn't like that, but it's at funny all. the things that I do remember. I do remember. Oh, that's not true. My third grade teacher was not nice. Oh, really? I did not like my third oh. grade teacher. Um, but I remember being in third grade, memorizing um, multiplication tables from the wall, um, and some some poem about Columbus. I remember, don't know why I remember those two specific things. I remember in second grade learning um, silent H's in the word like that, or no. Like yeah, no, um, there was hour? a word. No, it was a weird word, and we used to get sent home like with a word over the weekend and see if anybody could come back at the, how to spell it. Oh. And it had an H in it, and it was like, huh. Like the... the I don't um, remember. I'm trying to think. Bow. It was something, like yeah, it was something or, weird. Yeah, and I was G-H it, ones, right? It was, yeah. it, remember, it was like that learn where you're like... My oh. favorite was where, where it was the two words, because it's, it's strange, right? Because two words that sound that, the same, but don't but mean or, anything. Yeah, or spelt different, but said the same, like pain and pain, window right, pain, right. oh, my arm sore pain, right? Like those yes. ones. I remember a lot about those words yes. and stuff. But I think, uh, like, I was in six primary schools. So, you know, what makes sense to me, I was like, why don't I remember any teachers? And I'm like, because I didn't know there was long a enough, big right. turnover going on there. But then also just second language, you know, right. and I think in Manchester schools now, that is a challenge. Yes. We're seeing a lot of second language learners. Yep. And I'm like, I'm empathetic to that. That yep. was my own experience. Yep. I came and I spoke Afrikaans, which is like Dutch, and then started in an English school in America. <laughs> and so all I'm saying is these things are not insurmountable. No, nope. You can do it. Uh, people can become highly functioning. Yeah. You know, <laughs> immigrants too can become highly functioning, you know, well-spoken right. people. It and it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Well, what it really is but, about is the desire to excel. Well, I agree. I think that, you know, you, I do wonder sometimes when you look at schools, like why is, why has it changed so much? And it doesn't seem like I mean, kids are excelling. did you see that the, the results actually well, this, came out for results. the proficiency in, and less than 50% in, of in students in Manchester, well, yeah, actually it was statewide, are proficient in reading or yeah. math, less than well, 50%. Well, and here it right? says um, for 2016-17, school year, um, only 22% of the city's fifth graders scored proficient or better in the statewide assessment for math. 22%? That's one out of, that's not even one out of four. That is literally a group of people going two plus two is five. Right. And then... <laughs> that um, is in 1984 They joke. did say that, yeah. <laughs> the state average for fifth grade math proficiency in the state was 47%. And not one of Manchester's elementary schools reached that goal. And I thought, what? That We spent like... A, a lot, a of, lot money. of money and we give them millions and millions more every year and obviously i don't know so i i wonder you know and, and i've certainly said this before and i'll say it again i think what we're doing is not working it is not and, right it is not going to fix the, the problem you know and so you know is it okay we're testing for proficiencies that aren't being taught or are right. we whatever but you know in the end i'm like 
I know of one solution to a lot of these <laughs> problems it. is what? to create more competition. Right. Because maybe we don't know, but one thing we do know is if you let people create little smaller groups of things, right. then, you know, if I think this works, right. then I can go try this. And someone right. else can be like, I think this, this works. works. And then we can learn and then from each like, other. Oh, the wait, problem right. now is it's, we've standardized everything. to the lowest common denominator, right. everything. And it's like no one's needs are being right. served. I mean, and just thinking like long term, I mean, people in, you know, we talk about workforce training yep. and it's like, well, you know, if you have to wait till someone's 18 to start tra- to, to teach them how to do math right. that they should have learned in third right. grade, right. this is a problem. Right. And so all you're doing is you've created this, 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 this hungry monster that's like give me money give me money yep. give me money and it's like but what are we getting for the right. money and more policies and more standardization i don't know i'm yeah, with you it's... i think that i think that there are there has to be solutions to um provide at better educating kids there and... are there are solutions i'm not an educator i didn't you know like this isn't what i do for a living um I don't but think... But also this sort of concept... I'm sorry, this is... I'm sure going to anger a lot of people, okay. but... <laughs> it's okay. But this sort of idea that there's this... Like, you need a degree, you no. know, like, in terms of how to teach and stuff. I'm like, well, we've done it for hundreds... We d- hundreds it right. of years. And you know what? A hundred, two hundred years ago, uh, whenever uh, de Tocqueville was writing, mm-hmm. like, everyone could read and write right. at that stage. Yes, there was less of a population, but you know what? Everyone right. could read and write. So right. it's like, what's changed? Right. I mean, one of the things that's changed is government has stuck its finger in every yep. aspect of our lives, yep. including how we educate people. And, and apparently we're not doing and, it very And making well it anymore. very difficult for anybody else to educate. Right. You know, so, so it's it not even a monopoly. Like, right. It's not just that we have public schools over here and maybe they're not scoring really well, but you can go over here because you can't go over there. We make it difficult or impossible for people to go over there. And which is why someone like Kate Baker does yes. really important work. She right got five hundred students with um, scholarships this year. She, that was her goal. She wanted five hundred. And, and good for her. Yeah, and and that is you know so f- for a lot of us, and certainly I feel this way too. Is I I, I would love to see the money follow the child. Yes. Like, are we in the business of buildings, b- building <laughs> schools, and or are we in the business of School. educating and cherishing education for children, depending on how they learn and what they need? And to me, it's a no brainer. Like I, I, I genuinely feel shocked every time someone yep. criticizes my idea because I'm like. Really? Like, what? They, you don't think kids are individuals oh, and they get, need they, to and they learn get so in defensive. They're, like, there was a, um, there was something about charter schools recently. I don't remember. I think it was a grant. There, you know, some federal grant, which is still taxpayer money, but just whatever. Um, and somebody was like, well, shouldn't that money go to the regular public schools? And I'm like, but why does everything have to go to this one? You know, must we always make chocolate chip cookies? Can we sometimes make oatmeal cookies? You know, why does it only have to be chocolate chip cookies? That's what it is. That's what the meant really what you're saying is you can't have anything but chocolate chip cookies because we've decided chocolate chip cookies and we have chocolate chip cookie bakers <laughs> who want to make the chocolate chip cookies and we can't, they need their jobs and but they I belong to. I just want a little bit of mint But I just like a little, no, you chip. can't have that because the chocolate chip union said no. Um, yeah, and I mean, I certainly think that over time, I remain optimistic. I, I am an I optimist. try to be. Opt- I think, you know, the only way to look at life is to be hopeful. And yep. I think partly the reason we're hopeful is because we see challenges yep. and we realize doubling down on things that aren't working is not the smart right. way to go about things. So why don't we, you know, why aren't we more creative? Right. And create competition. That's all I want to do. I want to go, you know what? If you have the best then you'll way win. of doing then you'll, it, you'll, 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 you'll it'll win. Show. So, so the defensiveness and all of that sort of like reactionary feeling, to me, sort of smells like people <laughs> who maybe don't think they have the best right. approach. But who, but they have to protect their approach. Yeah. And and I think we can do better. And we should do better for the students and, and the, the people kids. who... I'm sure would like to be proficient in More reading than and writing and 
arithmetic. <laughs> um, the other thing that, so that was my light subject. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. That was my one. Well, the one that caught, bubbled up over the weekend is um, on Facebook. I saw somebody posted, I, have, I didn't know this person, but they were like, do I have to pay for this? And what they posted was a picture of um, an alarm billing notice from the Ordnance Violations Bureau of the Manchester Police Department. And I only got some of the words because they don't, you know, it was a screenshot type thing. Um, it was two alarm. Fire alarm? Like what kind no, of alarm are we talking about? Here? Well, I'm presuming that this is like ADT. So like oh, burglary like a, okay. alarms. Um so apparently in Manchester, and I don't know if this somebody questioned what RSA, what state law allows this, and I couldn't find it and didn't really have the motivation to find it. Um, but in Manchester, if you have a, a burglar or theft alarm installed in your house, so you hire ADT or Joe's security company or whatever, and they come in and install an alarm in your house, you must pay the city of Manchester Thirty dollars a year and file this handy dandy form to get permission to, I guess, have that alarm system that you just bought through ADT. So you have to pay a penalty to have private security. Well, I, I, I I'm going to make a presumption that the reason they started this was so that when I had ADT years ago, I don't believe I ever paid the city. Just so you know, but when our alarm, if somebody opened our door and didn't have the code, it ADT would call. And then if I couldn't provide the code, they would call the police. Okay. Okay. So I'm presuming that the reason this all came about was at some point they were trying to make people more responsible for their own security system so that they weren't responding. Weren't getting all these. To these non. Right. Uh, yep. Okay. Right. However, when you call the police with real live human being and say there's something going on, they generally don't respond. So which do they respond to more? Do they respond to the, the alarm calls through a security company or do they respond to people on the other end of the phone calling with a complaint? Because it kind of does make you wonder, is there a priority for one over the other? Um, and this person who didn't have an, this permit because she had no idea because ADT didn't or whoever didn't tell her because their answer, she did say she called ADT and they said, well, it varies from town to town. So we don't tell you anything <laughs> like, oh, well, that's Andy. So I don't know how you're supposed to know you have to get a permit. How would you know that? Like, why would you? randomly do i need a permit to i don't know what i mean uh, you know based on things we're seeing every week it's like maybe you need a permit, permit to, to breathe right <laughs> so um it's 30 dollars a year if you're 65 or older you don't have to pay it even though i did laugh that when you print out the senior citizen intrusion alarm form it still does say payment is due within 30 days even though <laughs> this is the form that says you don't have to pay um, but what was more annoying to this person was not that they were just sending the $30. They want $100 because there's a $100 fine if you don't have a permit. Okay, that's a little onerous because that's three times the cost of the permit. For a permit, you probably don't no, know you you're need. supposed to have. Right? Yeah. So I was like, this is what's wrong. When but I bet you this is also that kind of stuff where there was like, oh, uh, they wrote this law because there was this one need. And then, you know, and now we just they, like, have yeah, this, this ordinance was passed in 94 and, when that when ADT was like, woohoo, get right. a fancy alarm for your house. Yep. But this is the problem when there's multiple pages. <laughs> Look at all that I mean, paperwork. Seriously, ridiculous. this is the, this is all <laughs> part of the, the ordinance. For alarms, like <laughs> system performance review. But no, government's not too big, guys. And it goes on and on about how, and if, you're, if your permit is revoked, or if you go to get a permit and you haven't paid the back fines, they won't give you a permit. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like extortion. So... That made me think about like, okay, so I get it. You know, we do our tax dollars pay and you really don't want it. I really don't think it's very efficient for a police officer to be spending time responding to someone who was too lazy to set the alarm or unset the alarm, right? But then I got to thinking about like, but I have to pay for police to do all sorts of things that I don't necessarily need. But, the, but nobody, there's no fine or there's no 
permit required. You know, there's certain properties, we all know certain properties in our neighborhoods that the police are called to constantly. Right. Like every day, you're like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so I'm paying for this patrol that's going to constantly be involved in, but nothing ever comes of it. You know what I mean? Like, shouldn't we, maybe we should, instead of finding somebody $100 for not having a permit, maybe we should be bill, start billing after, I mean, how many times is a reasonable amount of time for the police to come to your home? Yeah, I think that that uh, opens some interesting you know, shouldn't it maybe be like a user fee? So, like, if I'm playing or... my stereo at 2 a.m. so loud that my neighbors call and the police come and they say, turn your stereo down, you can't be as loud after 10, right? And then next Friday, I play my stereo so loud in the middle of the night that the police have to come and we do it twice. So, they've now been there twice in a month for the same thing. How many times can I play my stereo loud in the middle of the night, which is going against city ordinances, that the police are going to respond to before maybe I start getting hit with a user fee. Yeah, I mean, I'm maybe not... Maybe that would be a deterrent. I'm not adverse to, to that sort of thinking. I mean, the, the, the only danger I could see is, is if people, you know, are retaliate. vindictively Well, I thought of that, but I mean, the police in, know, they you know, know that. So, But I mean, then that person, event, because, if you keep calling in bogus... Calls. Well, the, the other thing that I have noticed in newspaper articles, and it's sort of, you know, a lot of police departments just recently in the past year have gotten PR firms. Yes. Uh, which I find kind of interesting because it's also, there is a requirement now uh, for some backroom deal, and we can have another conversation <laughs> about this on a different show, but... Um, where if you want to get certain kind of spying software, you actually have to have a PR person on your department payroll. So I was like, hmm, huh, what is this? What's I'm the correlation go, there? I'm going to go parse all of that out. But with, with the PR people, another thematic thing that you see a lot from police departments is this idea of we get all these call-outs, yeah. all these unnecessary call-outs, right. right? And so I was wondering, is there something we should be looking at in terms of process to start to address that, which right. goes to the same concern you're expressing, right? So it's like, well, if we're getting this overwhelming volume of calls and 80% of those aren't really police matters, right? right? Aren't criminal enforcement matters, right. but there are these other nebulous things, yeah. right? Okay, so do, does dispatch need to be trained better to, to tell say that's not you know what this isn't uh, this isn't a call we can respond to right. you know or when somebody calls and says I saw somebody walking down the street open carrying their handgun well does dispatch say that's, that's not, not against the, that's not illegal we can't send a police officer for something that's not illegal right. Well, I, and, and I think part of the problem is that everyone thinks everything should be illegal, right? right? Like right. someone's like in their own little bubble and they're like, eh, this offends my <laughs> sensibilities. And so, oh, that must surely be illegal, right. you know? And I'm right. like, well, no, no. that's See, not how that works. How freedom works is, you know, everyone's got to just like suck it up and, and have that a live little bit. and yeah. let live, right? Where it's like, eh, that doesn't just mean what you want. Right, right. My but, liberties, but what and I your liberties, to, and our, and we, you know, you know, so. So I definitely think that there there are challenges. I mean, I know there is a lot of waste that goes on in terms of those sort of call outs. So maybe there is some kind of I'm all for the more we can switch things to user based right. expenses for people. I think that makes I sense. I mean, I don't want to do I wouldn't maybe want... the lady who wants to call to complain about something for the seventh time, time. if she's gonna get, get a, a, bill, a bill for twelve dollars because you know, of it's it. like, oh, maybe you Well and I see that a lot on Facebook when different people People post, you know, with concerns about different things. There's a few groups where I, I had to silence most of them because they're exhausting. <laughs> but, um, you know, somebody will say, this is happening. And so many people's immediate responses will call the police. And I always think, well, what, you know, there's trash behind my building. Call the police. Well, why? Why? What are the police going to arrest the trash bag? Like what? <laughs> I mean, I just like think it's that critical thinking. Like, and then of course, if you say, "Why are you calling the police?" People are like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "Well, because that's not really what they're supposed to be for." And maybe if they were doing, maybe if they were more allowed to do what they were 
supposed to be doing, we'd have a better... Well, but I think part of the challenge actually is that, uh, you know, and, and these are my personal opinions, but I think, you know, we, we really do have too many police for actual For the crime, real crime. That's for what real I'm crime. So property crimes... And, um, and so you know, much and, of that crime doesn't get resolved, doesn't get solved. They don't find the criminal. But how could they possibly, when people are, when all these police are just out there doing all these other things? And I think it puts an unnecessary strain on on the police. Mm. I mean, I, that one way I've heard it framed, and I really like it, is we're asking them to, to do, do too much, right? Kind of like the fire department, if. if well, because they go out. They go out on all the overdrug co- overdose but, but calls. But, like, literally with their truck. <laughs> and so, you crazy. know, like, when you hear the sirens. You're like, oh, is there a fire? Like, oh, is there a terrible accident? Did something happen? And no. then it's like. And, and someone asked. This was two or three years ago. Um, there was a whole debate in the newspaper. And the police chief at the time was asked. But this is an incredible waste uh, why don't you just send out the little van yeah. or the little, you know, especially if you know yep. it's an OD or whatever, yep. where it's it's a unproportional response yep. that costs taste that that costs taxpayers money, and that is literally a waste that right. we could manage to. Right. And the problem is there isn't an appetite to reduce those things right. because now you're saying, oh, you know what? If I had to be entirely 100% honest on this budget, I, would I need, need less money. And there is not right. one bureaucrat in no. the world who will well, and, do and, the right and, thing and in that Unfortunately, scenario. the unions are involved in this as well and because they, they, they consistently say that fire calls are down and I realize that the rest of their calls are skyrocketing. But we're sending firefighters, people who are trained to fight fires, are now supposed to be these social services providers. And I'm like, shouldn't maybe we should stop and look? How many firefighters do we need and how many EMTs or something do we need? Well, so the interesting thing there is, you know, we we are... We can talk about this next week, but this sort of idea of, you know, is it law enforcement? Are we providing social services? What is the correct role for government? And and when we look at that holistically, maybe there are genuine changes that need to come Because things change over time. Yeah. Because fires are down. Because either we've reached the pinnacle of human evolution or everything can be done a little better. That's right. Oh, that's how we got um, kids are back to school, so be careful. They're out there walking, you know, go in the morning and whatnot, going to school. So just keep remember that there's little ones jotting in and out. Um, and little ones, remember to look both ways that's because right. you know what? The world's not a safe place that's and right. you have to take responsibility that's for right. your own actions. There you go. So, and go learn math, apparently. <laughs> um, we'll be back next week. Uh, enjoy the weather. It's my favorite time of the year because it's nice and crisp at night. And in the meanwhile, two plus two is still four. Four. <laughs> Have a good weekend.